Good morning and welcome to the House of Jinshan. I'm very honored to uh, introduce and have here today with me Susan Brooks. She's in Boulder, Colorado. And Susan has been a very, very long time teacher of Jin Shin Jitsu and a practitioner. And she's also a nutritionist. And so she will throw in some nice food thingies for us. Uh, <laughs> uh, Susan, uh, you know, I'm passing it over to you because you had some wonderful ideas. And go ahead. We're ready for you. Oh, okay then. Um, and by the way, I consider myself the longest time student. I'm forever a student and um, I love to just keep passing along. Yes, <laughs> all, of these, all of these nuggets and pearls that we keep learning and discovering every day. Well, um, then I'm just here to say that you are also a teacher and certainly because oh. you are one of my <laughs> teachers. Oh, and you know, really, I just want to say that uh, also, and you know, of course, we are always the eternal students, and also as an art uh, with Jin Shin Jitsu, we just always keep learning and growing, right? Yes, and whatever you are, that's for all of us. Yes, absolutely. And for those of you that didn't get to hear Maria last week, I thought her her conversation with you was so great, and she said something that was a great reminder for all of us about this art in that we can study, 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 and then practice what we learn on bodies. However, the real teaching is from the body to the book. You know, the body and what we learn from the body when we place our hands on others and ourselves is what informs us and helps the information that we learn in the books to come alive. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> So do you want me to just start, Alexis? Or? Yeah, just, just give a little introduction. I know what she's going to talk about. And I guess just give a little introduction. And then after that, I also want, would like to say something to a very dear person of mine in Holland. And of course, for that reason, I would like to translate as you're moving along the flow pattern. But you, you go ahead and start. Yeah. Sure, sure. And I also want to give a shout out to friends that have come because so many of us haven't been able to see each other live for a while. And so I wanted to give a shout out to clients that are here and my Boulder study group and um, my Saturday morning nutritionist group that we talk with every, every week. So thank you all for being here. It's nice to connect, be able to connect with everybody and see people live and have this practice together. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to say that in some regards, I feel like, these are the times, these last couple of months for us, that really allow the self-help Jin Shin Jitsu to come to life. I mean, this, these are the times that it was really made for and that it can shine and we can really experience the power and the profound healing um, capability of this art. So I love that it's being shared now so much. And uh, <clears throat> so I wanted to talk about... Um, the gallbladder flow. And the gallbladder flow, and I'm assuming there are people that are experienced practitioners on this call, and maybe people that are brand new to Jin Shin Jitsu. So <clears throat> I'm going to address the whole group so that it will meet each of you where you are in your learning with Jin Shin Jitsu. So um, the gallbladder flow, and as we know about all of these sequences with Jin Shin Jitsu, all these uh, safety energy locks and locations, um, each one of them has a very specific job. And I think Maria called them the workhorses, which I also loved, um, these safety energy locks. So they have a specific location. There are 26 pairs in the body, right and left. They have a specific function in terms of what they help physically. Um, and then metaphorically, they also have a specific um, meaning on more of an energetic level. And so that's how I like to think of all of Jin Shin Jitsu. The, the principles and the teachings came from a time um, when there was no separation in these dimensions. Spirit, mind, and body, they were just levels, different levels of, uh, and they are, of vibration. So we don't compartmentalize in Jin Shin Jitsu like sometimes uh, that can happen in Western medicine where we just view the physical body. So. Um, as such, the gallbladder helps on all levels, and it helps us physically, emotionally, um, it helps our mind. And 
I thought it was a very useful flow to share today for a couple of reasons. One, it's easy to do on yourself. It's very easy to remember because I think about these sequences as um, they're like learning dance steps or maybe memorizing a poem or a piece of music we have the memory in our fingers once we do it a few times. So I think what I'll do, so we are efficient with our time and respectful of yours, um, let's just start. And Although I could just listen to you all day. Oh. Really. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's true, it is. I, I exhaust myself, so I'm happy <laughs> to be. <laughs> um, the, the mind is going, and this is one thing, the gallbladder will help, it helps to. Oh. <laughs> Oh gosh, it helps to oxygenate the brain. That's one of the things it does. Can I, uh, Susan, can I just show uh, this flow pattern? It's in my book. Because my dear friend Jessica, who's watching from Amsterdam right now, she had a, a project and um, she has very severe gallstones mm -hmm. and attacks. And so she's going to get surgery to have to remove. But last week she had incredible pain in her leg. And so if you look at the pathway, can you see the flow here? No? I don't know. If anyway, if you look, can you see that, Susan? I don't know. Yes. If yes. you look at the pathway, you see how it moves through the leg. And so it's very, these are signs that the body are giving you if you have pain in your leg. The energy pathway that becomes the gallbladder, uh, we can look at that. And that flow that Susan is going to present today will help with that. So that's on page 78. I just wanted to, for my friend to move along. Jessica, I hope you're moving along with us. So let's begin by placing our left hand on the side of our left neck. And it's called, the safety energy lock is number 12. And so it's really just right about the middle of the left neck. If you know anatomy, it's level with the fourth cervical vertebra, which uh, has a relationship with the sun. So even if we just wanna bring in some sunshine and light, uh, we can hold this place on our neck and then the right hand goes just above the eyebrow about the center of the forehead uh, on safety energy lock number 20. Uh, I just want to translate it to left uh, the linker 12 that is at midden van your neck here and then your rechter hand gaat iets boven your wenkbrauw that is uh, safety energy location 20. And 20, as I mentioned, each of these safety energy locks has a specific meaning and function. And the 20s help, I think about the 20s as helping us to receive inspiration from spirit, divine, uh, creative inspiration. Uh, it's near the third eye, which is a place also that we can hold for inspiration. And uh, so I like to think of this as just light coming in and, uh, and then the 12 on the side of the neck, the whole neck helps our digestion. Um, and this 12 has to do with, I think about it as if we happen to be stubborn and maybe controlling, we like things to go our way, holding the 12s really helps to soften us and help us to be perhaps less rigid and less my way or the highway kind of thing. Um, this left 12 in particular will help us um, when we're upset, rather than blaming others, it can help us perhaps take, look within and take a little more responsibility for what's going on. So if you put this flow in an attitude, what, which one? Oh yeah, so this flow is, you've heard Alexis talk about the depths, which are just dimensions of life. And um, each of the depths has specific organ functions and safety energy locks and colors and tastes. And this is third depth and this is frustration and anger. And um, that's the attitude, impulsiveness. And I thought, again, this was a helpful flow and depth to support and harmonize during this time because a lot of us have felt quite a bit of frustration, excessive anger, confusion. Um, <clears throat> you know, the gallbladder is considered one of our more emotionally charged organ functions, and it's easily affected by uh, surrounding events in our environment. 
If so, somebody has uh, gallstones like my friend does, is this flow helpful for that? Yes, absolutely. So on a physical level, it will help everything and anything that the gallbladder organ itself helps. Although the pathway is um, a head to toe pathway, just similar to the meridians in uh, um, acupuncture. So yes, this is excellent for gallstones. And if we think about the liver, you know, each of these organ functions has a, has a partner and the gallbladder's partner is the liver function. And um, so together they work to help to create bile and, and then it's stored and then it's released in the gallbladder. And then it helps to break down fat. So if something is amiss with that process, um, we're gonna start to develop gallstones. So this is very helpful for, um, for gallstones. Is this also helpful then if people are overweight? Yes, absolutely, yeah. And again, if you look at the pathway in particular, if you tend to hold your weight on the outside of your legs, you know, we, we call them saddlebags, um, this is really good because the pathway goes right along the side of the legs. Um, so that just makes me think like if so, you hear a lot of people of having things like sciatica and having radiating pain down the leg, is this flow, do you recommend this flow as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now that's the first step. The second step, we're going <laughs> to take our, take our right hand and place it on the coccyx, right at the base of the spine. And you can do it, I, I, I forgot to mention, make sure you're all comfortable. You can do this lying down, sitting up, there you go. Pillows. I love to do uh, these self-help sequences on a yoga mat with my legs up the wall. That's one of my favorite positions for doing this because it relaxes the nervous system too. Um, so yes, this helps sciatica because again, if we're looking at the pathway, it goes right into the low back into the lumbar and sacral area, and then it goes down the leg. So sciatica is when you have that terrible kind of nerve pain um, <clears throat> that starts in the low back and emanates down the, down the leg. So this is great for sciatica. And we're doing the left flow, and the left flow helps pain in the left sciatic, <clears throat> excuse me, sciatic area. Um, and I wanted to tell, I'll just tell a quick story about my friend, Sally, who may be, uh, may be listening. Hi, Sally. Um, she uh, had an accident with her boyfriend who was teaching her how to drive a tractor. They're both about 70 years old and he lives on a farm. And unfortunately, his foot slipped from the tractor pedal and it literally ran over her left side. And interestingly, um, so I have been doing Zoom calls with her and together we've been doing this guided gallbladder flow because it's helping her left shoulder, which was painful before the accident. She crushed her sacral pelvic area and she now has a big metal rod in there. And she had a hematoma on the upper thigh, outside of the thigh area which is right along the gallbladder line. So mm -hmm. I find it so interesting with Jin Shin Jitsu. I feel like we're detectives and we have our little detective hats on and we're always looking for common denominators. You know, if you, if you took someone like Sally to a medical doctor, which she's been to many, she goes to several different specialists, which, which is important. You know, her back and low, her pelvis is, is uh, repairing itself, but she had to go to a separate doctor for her shoulder and a separate doctor for her leg. And this flow, which she has, um, she said it's really been helping her. And now it's looking like she may not even have to have the surgery on her leg to drain that hematoma, which she was supposed to have. So interesting. Wonderful. Yeah. Can you also talk a little bit? I may, we may want to move to the next step, but yes. Okay. First, so the next step. A question. So we're going to take our right hand, the left hand, by the way, one reason this is so easy, it's just going to stay there throughout. So now on the neck, so the right hand, you might get to see my feet here. The, uh, <laughs> they're almost the Alexis's. There we go. So the right, the 
right hand <laughs> pedicure <laughs> goes on the outside of the right ankle. So it's really between the ankle bone and the heel in that little divot area, and that's your 16. De rechterhand gaat onder de enkel, onder het enkel bot aan de buitenkant. Dat is nummer 16. Yes. And by the way, if 16 is too difficult to get to for whatever reason, you can just hold your 8 on the outside of your um, calf, upper calf. But most of you, I'm thinking, can get there. Now the 16 um, has to do with our foundation. And it has to do with transformation, which is what we're all undergoing right now as we're recalibrating during this time. Um, my very first session with Mary, she held my 16 and I felt like I went into outer space. It was, it was very painful. And I asked her, I said, what is that? And she said, <clears throat> She said, if you were a house, your foundation is built with sand right now. And she said, we're helping to, this is going to help to wash away the sand and rebuild your foundation so that it's strong. That's a beautiful explanation. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So 16 is about, um, I have another friend that had a big, big change in her life. Um, Lynn Pfluger, actually, who has since A lot of us know Lynn. She was a teacher, also wonderful. Yeah, and she went through a lot, a very difficult year personally, many, many, many years ago. And she said she just became a 16 for the year. That was her safety energy lock that she held for transformation and rebuilding her life. Wow, okay. I think, yeah. I, I think, it's okay, also, but, oh, go ahead. We just learned 16, quite a story. The 16 also helps the head, right? Can you explain why? Yeah. Yes. So, and that's the other thing about the gallbladder flow is that it will help headaches. And my friend Sally, again, was having headaches, primarily in the side of her head, the temple area. And if we think about that pathway of the gallbladder flow, which starts below the eye and it actually goes through the outside ankle where we're holding, um, that will help to clear that specific area of the head. And so if you're someone that's prone to headaches or migraines in particular, um, this can really help. Uh, yeah, and so now let's take the hand that's on the 16 and bring it up to just below the ribs on the right side of the front of the body, which is your right 14. <coughs> the rechterhand gaat hier naar waar je ribben eindigen. 14, number 14. So that's where the gallbladder lives. Yes, exactly. That's where the gallbladder um, lives. Do you and feel that, because um, my friend, I know she's just starting her practice, Jessica. This is very much dedicated to her today uh, from my side. Um, but she had some fears or the doctor had some questions like, is it safe to practice? Because I think she had actually an attack after she got a session. And um, I think the doctor was hesitant for her to continue. So can you talk a little bit to that? Like, does it work together with medical? Can it bring, how it brings something up? And should it not be done? Yeah, I mean, I am very much a proponent of combining this with Western medicine. I mean, many of us would not be here without Western medicine. So I feel like it's a wonderful adjunct, um, not necessarily just a substitute for Western medicine. And, um, you know, for instance, uh, I have another friend that just had eight hour gallbladder surgery on Monday. And she has a big label or a project as Mary would call it. She had her gallbladder removed and bile duct and um, portion of her stomach, et cetera. And just because an organ is removed, it doesn't mean the energy pathway is still not there. So it's more important than ever to do that um, for her, for my friend, for instance, to do that gallbladder yeah. flow. And for Jessica, um, with that gallstone, you know, sometimes Jinshin Jitsu can be like, you know, as Mary said, you might, like if, if you have migraines, 
and you get a session or give yourself a gallbladder flow, you may end up having a worse migraine than you've had as it's clearing, as, as it's moving through the system and the um, circulation pathways are... Re so there's really... What, uh, so there's really not like a contraindication, right? I mean, we can safely practice. Uh, well, what I would say on the one hand, you, the, again, I think as Maria said last week, the only mistake that you can make is if you know this and don't utilize it. That's what Mary said. On the other hand, there are basic principles to follow, right? So as above, so below, if you've got something going on, above the waist, you want to create um, a way for that to descend through the body. So in Jessica's case, you know, she may want to hold on to her 15s first, or perhaps oh, The 15 one. is the, like the groin area, the, yeah. um, if, can you show it? I guess I yeah, can show it's, it. Uh, let's see 15 here. is here, Just right and there. the one is on the inside of the knee. Right. So you mean just to open it up first? Yeah, she could do that. But also this flow is a descending flow. Yeah. So in any case, it's not going to... That's right. You know, it's, it, it's a pretty safe one to do this one. That's right. And especially on the left side. And the left gallbladder flow in particular, going back to my next friend, Jill, who had the surgery. Um, <clears throat> uh, and she had a portion of her pancreas removed as well. Um, this left flow is for the pancreas. Um, and the right flow for your friend Jessica is more targeted specifically to the gallbladder and the liver. So she may want to experiment with which side, I, I would be curious which side gallbladder she may have received mm -hmm. uh, during that flow, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so now, so that right 14, the 14 helps us to digest. 14s help us to digest life food, the media, anything um, coming in from the outside. The right 14 in particular helps us to digest protein. Uh, corona? A corona, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why my mind went to a beer. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> protein, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, I don't drink beer, but I, I, I know there's protein in beer, yes. Um, and so the 14s are the waistline. So these are going to help with our eyes. They're going to help with um, our joints. That's the other thing with my friend Sally. She's had some joint issues. So this literally third depth will help to lubricate the joints. And now the right hand goes over to the left 14, below the ribs on the left side. So the under 13 for you Dutchies that are following along. Um, and the left 14, I think about beer as having some, some hefty carbohydrates, the Corona beer. Um, so this will help, the left 14 helps us with carbohydrate digestion in particular. And it also helps um, assimilation of, if we're on medications, so the medication can be assimilated and do what it's meant to do and dissipate the side effects and um, supplements same same with that so i love that both 14s are included in this sequence um, and the waistline mary used to call this like our go 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 self it's the part of us that just wants to be in the world it's the it's the person level uh, of life and so we get our inspiration from the 20s and the bus line and then the 14s is where we start to assimilate it and think about how to put it into practice right um, people often ask how long am i supposed to hold these and if you're just starting out you may not feel the pulsation, this universal life energy beneath the fingertips. Um, if you do, you want to wait until that pulsation is, I think about it as dance partners dancing in rhythm between the two places that you're holding. And you may or may not feel that. And if you don't, then you could do 
typically two or three breath cycles for each hold. And a breath cycle is an exhale and an inhale. That's one breath cycle. Mm -hmm. And as you see now, we've already been practicing for close to 20 minutes. So right. you can take 20 minutes also. Yes. Hold a couple of minutes per spot. That's right. And you can also, if you have discomfort uh, in the body or especially dis discomfort related to gallbladder uh, pathway or sequence, you can hold until the discomfort goes away or lessens. That's another, another guide. And then the last step is just to bring that right hand up to below that bone, which is the clavicle. And you can, you can feel along underneath that all the way from the more the middle area all the way out to that shoulder joint, which is called the acromion. And just place your fingers where they're drawn, where there might be. I personally right now have a little bit of a sinkhole in my 22 area wide, which happens to be more related to digestion in the stomach. So that's, it is precise here under this bot here, 22. And it comes from here or more in about the same. And again, just emphasizing the importance of being comfortable, feeling comfortable with every one of these steps. We don't have to be contortionists. And <laughs> just, yeah. you know, just feeling the shoulders dropping and that distance between the bottom of the earlobe and the shoulders increasing. Um, I normally, when I do self um obviously, uh, I think of it as more like a meditation, and I realize I'm talking a lot. However, I really encourage you to do this as a meditation, just in silence. Um, it's very powerful. Well, I really appreciate that you talked us through this and gave so much information, because now people can practice it in silence, maybe later or tomorrow. But you did give a lot of information. And the color is? Green. <laughs> yeah. The color is green and the season is springtime. So that's the other reason I wanted to share the gallbladder flow is <clears throat> because we're in that season right now. So third depth, spring is a time of new beginnings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's a time of little seedlings coming up and ideas. <clears throat> and... Um, the color is green and the taste, excuse me, <clears throat> the taste is sour, which will help. So in other words, what that means is if we want to support and be in sync with the season and even to support our gallbladder and liver function, we can just wear something green. Or eat something sour. How, does, how do the tastes come into being? Eat something sour. And I was going to share that... Um, in the springtime in particular, this is a time when people like to do detoxes, simple kinds of cleanses, that kind of thing. And I love making a little morning springtime elixir. And in it, I put just a little bit of fresh lemon juice and a little bit of, which is sour, and a little bit of apple cider vinegar, which is sour. And then I put in just a, a drop or a two of stevia, if you want. If you like sour, um, I sort of like having the little bit of sweet, which helps our digestion. Um, and it's just a, it's a nice way to, um, to support. So let's say if you crave sour, does that tell you something about the gallbladder energy yeah. or need? Yeah. Or? Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, it's all about sort of the, the Goldilocks principle, right? Like you don't wanna have too much, you don't wanna have too little. I mean, we need all of the taste and all of the flavors for balance. Mm -hmm. So we can actually put a burden on our gallbladder system by having too much sour. And then if we crave it, that is an indication that our body might want a little bit of extra right? mm -hmm. for, for support. I mean, same thing with our emotions. Like the gallbladder is the one that will help to level out our emotions, especially again during these times when many of us feel sort of all over the map emotionally, the gallbladder helps that kind of ranting and raving 
um, and just just smooth. Can you give us a um, a quickie or a finger if you don't have time to do the whole gallbladder flow or after you've practiced, like during the day, to give yourself a little tune up? Well, there are different specific. Well, always the first step is a nice quickie. Um, <clears throat> I always like doing the first step as a quickie for any of these. Um, the ring finger is a, is a great quickie for the gallbladder. Um, you could also just hold your 14s. Um, so those are, those are just three I can think of. And middle finger also? Yes, you could middle. hold the middle, middle finger on the level of um, the depths in relation to the fingers. And that's the third depth finger, right? So that's going to help our anger and frustration and feelings of <clears throat> indecision. If we feel like we're having a difficult time making decisions, um, holding the middle finger or the gallbladder flow can help that. Um, <clears throat> gallbladder oh, flow. Gonna... I just have to say one more thing. I just, yeah. yeah, yeah. The gallbladder flow, um, also, if we tend to be gossipers and we love to talk about other people, it kind of helps us that it it makes it like so that's not such a thrill and it helps us be kinder it just helps us be kinder mm -hmm. yeah wonderful yeah so we can all enjoy the gallbladder flow we know it now and um susan it was just so wonderful to see you is is colorado starting to open up it is i was saying to lola earlier um <clears throat> there's it's starting to open up so there's more personal choice uh, about where you can and can't go. Like our farmer's market is opening up this oh, week. Nice. Except you have to sign up for a 20 minute slot. So I, signed up, I signed up in the category of high risk group because of my age. I mean, I wasn't meaning that I was sick and bringing a credit card. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I don't I, think you look I, like the, the age group, but okay, maybe you can sneak in. <laughs> I don't know. I well, I, I don't need to share how old I am, but anyway, I'm in that age, I'm in that age group. So, um, and you know, just a few people at a time. How about New York? Okay. Yeah, slow, very very slowly. We're still everything is you know the restaurants are starting to open. We can pick up, but that's about it. Everything's still closed. Yeah. So, but thank well, God the park is open. You have been doing an amazing job, Alexis, bringing this to the world. And I just, I, I was, we were talking the other day, I credit you for your, so much for just your consistency and showing up every morning to help everyone. And I hope I'm really enjoying it. Well, it shows. And I hope people that are watching realize what a gift this is um, to have you there. Thank you. Thank Here, you. So many practical things. Yeah. I have, uh, I do have also a Pulse class tomorrow, part two. So if anybody still wants to sign up, I think you can. And uh, I think that's all the news. And it was really just wonderful to see you and to have you with us, Susan. Thank you for sharing this beautiful flow. Mm -hmm. And we will be in touch. And thank you all, everybody, for joining us at the House of Junshan. Oh. And uh, we'll see you soon, everybody. Thank you so much for inviting me, Alexis. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you bye -bye. for being here. Bye. Bye. Bye.